and we said, let's take our 100 3D printers. Let's go background. Super fast, yeah, right there. And uh, within days, we were printing. Uh, and 100 a day. Yeah, we Damn. started. We started scaling up. A week before a pandemic hit, I got a surgery for my appendix. Like it was about a burst. Like we, these guys rushed me to the hospital. The bars was there. Like I like after the surgery, I was like recovering at home uh, on a couch for a whole week while this whole pandemic hit. And we just didn't know what to do. Um, and when I was finally able to walk again, I wanted to go back to work. And you know the whole lockdown happened, and so we had to decide to shut down. The whole thing about like people reading on the media is like all three different masks, and they wanted to. Uh, you know, our friends just kept sending us articles and we were like, we're not just, I, I, we knew it just was all fake because the media is just full of like nonsense. Uh, really we is. know how 3D prints work and we know it's not going to work to 3D print max because it's just not watertight uh, and all the layer lines collect particles. And also we knew that it would have to be FDA approved, obviously. We can't just give hospitals like face like face masks that we don't know and we don't want to be liable if someone gets COVID because they're wearing a face mask we produced. We knew we wanted to do something, but we only wanted to do something if it had a real impact and it was very applicable in the actual hospital. You know, I was calling hospitals and I was even calling the doctor that just did my surgery asking them what we can do and pretty much wow. that's when the whole face shield thing happened and we realized the face shields, you know, it's not a solution to their problem, but it's an addition, additional like protection because we realized that they were out of goggles and the goggles are what helped them, you know, because it is airborne, but also you can transmit COVID through um, like liquids, right? So if they got right. liquids in their eye, then that was a problem and they didn't have goggles. So they needed face shields. Uh, I got put in touch with somebody at Columbia University who was in the very beginning stages of starting to work directly with the hospitals. And that's what I was exciting to me because a doctor at Columbia had approached um, some people from the school with uh, wanting to test face shields. And they had made a few face shields which uh, were tested. And then I think they'd made like, you know, a handful of them when they were introduced to me and Eugene and I, and then we got on the phone and said, let's figure out how to, because they had five 3D printers running. And we said, let's take our 100 3D printers. And uh, within days, we were printing. We had the idea to create something called COVID Maker Response. Uh, we sat down, we wrote copy. We worked with this guy, Alex Gill from Columbia, to put up a website within 24 hours. Wow. And on that site, we had a request form if people wanted um, to get face shields. And then we also had another form if people wanted to volunteer to donate. And that's one of the things I wanted to say is that this happened so fast. Within, within a week of the initial conversations, we were up and running. We had uh, 3D prints happening here at Tangible. And we also had MakerBot got involved, which so we had uh, part of the face shield being printed in Newark, part of it being printed at MakerBot. We had an NYU film student named George Du volunteer every single day to drive to both places, pick up the face shields, drive them to the 92nd Street Y, where wow. the Columbia folks organized getting that space and a distribution network. And then every single day, uh, they were being distributed to hospitals to the point where in the absolute apex of this crisis, when the government had no idea what they were doing, when their need was not being met at all, well, El when Elmhurst was was in such a state, we were distributing to Elmhurst, we were distributing to these um, hospitals where nobody else was distributing. We have distributed to over 50 hospitals in New York. There's been kind of like two phases of the effort. One was during this peak, um, and then now what's happened is we've, we're continuing to produce face shields, but we're shipping them to Michigan, we're shipping them to Florida, we're shipping them to Mexico, we're shipping Georgia, them. yeah, Hawaii, Bahamas. Yeah, like, that's insane. The thing, um, because the, the need is moving. This whole thing really hit Navarre's and I in our own personal spaces. So for mine, it was 
the, the doctor that actually performed my surgery, like she gave me her phone number because I was supposed to go back in for a checkup for my stitches and she's like, don't come in. Like we're gonna do the wow. checkup through, like on the phone, like don't come in because COVID. So then, uh, you know, I told her what we were doing and how we were producing face shields and um, we were able to help and, you know, she requested a thousand. So the fact that I was able to help someone that saved my life really, really meant a lot to me. My son was born uh, last February, three months early. And he, uh, he was, uh, he spent three months, he's doing great, but he spent three months, he's like perfect, but in the neonatal natal intensive care unit in the NICU. Yeah. Um, and, you know, which was this like pivotal life experience for me. And I started to wonder, you know, like how they were doing during this whole pandemic, you know, did they, and like this one morning I got up and I checked our little sheet of people requesting face shields. And I see that there's an email from the Jacoby Medical Center NICU requesting face, a hundred face shields, right? They wrote this like super dire, like urgent, like we are in desperate need of this thing. But they had no idea that they were writing me, who was a parent who had just spent all this time. Wow. <laughs> Three <laughs> months, like in the hospital. Like, so crazy. Day and night. It's I insane. Was like, oh my God. So I wrote them and I said, of course, we're going to get full you circle. These, we're going to get you these 100 face shields, like as soon as possible. I want you to know that my son is, is Kai, who was born there. And then they just, we just all lost it. Because of course they remembered him. They spent three months with him. They couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that this, this uh, it was like such a profound experience. It's me. amazing, absolutely to, amazing. You know, technology and to be able to give back to these people that basically, you know. They like yeah. our family, save yeah. their own lives.